ladies and gentlemen, is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever living boo boo stain off of that Centurion subscribe button as the self appointed Centurion King kindly asks you to help us climb even higher the 1300 ladder. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. I wanted to show off since, you know, we are uh, the self appointed Centurion King, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, but. Your boy got 10th place. I wanted to show off what I've been tweaking with with Centurion. And I figured, what better time than ever, now that we are technically at the start of the new format. Um, and Yu-Gi-Oh is kind of in a quiet time right now. Like, there's no updated regional lists on Konami's website. We really don't have a quote-unquote real YCS until, like, August with the one in, like, South Carolina. Wherever Rally is. I didn't take Geography or Geometry, whichever it is. <laughs> Um, but we've got, like, team YCSs and stuff, and I don't think those really count for anything. And the remote duels, obviously, is just probably filled with cheaters, so we don't even consider those to be a thing. But, I wanted to at least show off what I've been tweaking around with with Centurion. I saw a build that was playing by steel cards, um, but I also really like playing a lot of hand traps. So, I've been tweaking with some things here and there. This is by no means a final build. Um, I'm also going to talk about why I feel like Centurion has suffered inherently just with the passage of time. Uh, but without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive on into it. If you saw my 10th place regional build, um, I would definitely recommend you go watch that video to see how that build has changed compared to this one with the new ban list because we're no longer playing three Tikaboo because Tikaboo's now at one. Playing it at one's just really garbage. Um, and we've also cut the uh, desires uh, just as a whole. We were playing it at two. It's at three, but now instead we're playing Super Poly. So I'm just going to shut up and uh, tell you to pour some maple syrup on my hairy chest, and let's just dive on into it. So, uh, we're playing two copies of the Emmet 6 still. You want one in your deck for whenever you do the typical stand-up line. You know, you can go for Primera to grab, you know, Trudea, or, you know, pitch a card with stand-up effect to grab Trudea to get to Emmet 6, or get to the Emmet 6 out of your deck with stand-up, whatever it is that you need. It's good to play two. We're playing the um, two Druus Worm with the Magna Mutt. Um, I'm going with Buy Steals here because... I feel that buy steals are just great hand traps overall. I was also messing around with, um, what is that card, rebranded, or whatever the continuous spell is. Um, I also wanted to try and mess around with duality, but duality just doesn't really work in this deck, uh, at least in my testing. I really want to just be playing the Centurion main deck cards with like 15 hand traps, but I feel like going into this new format, you don't really need that many hand traps, which is weird to say, because the reason why I did so well with Centurion was because of the fact I played so many hand traps, also because of the fact that people didn't know what the deck does, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so I really am kind of conflicted on the buy seals, because post-Phantom Nightmare, when we have both Phantom Nightmare and Maze of Millennia in circulation with Bonfire, Transaction Rollback, all that sexy stuff, I feel like the buy seals are going to kind of just go under the radar, because everything's going to be all fire all the time, and obviously the buy seals don't do a damn thing to fire. So, that's something to keep in mind moving forward. we got the three Primera, because it's a Stratos, three Trudea, because it's good, and then three Ash, three Droll, and three Valor to round off the monsters. Um, I'm sure some people are going to say, why are you not playing Bonfire? You only have three targets, you don't need Bonfire. The issue is that if you play Bonfire just to get to the Trudea, you're probably already losing anyway, especially if you get drolled at that point, then it turns off your Primera, and if you don't have stand-up, you just lose the game anyway. You know, what made Centurion so good was that it doesn't really care too much about Shifter, depending on the game state, and then if my opponent drolled me, I was laughing internally because... I've already got my one search with Primera. You're just denying me the draw one off of the Legadia at that point. So I don't really feel like playing more search cards just to like get a giant droll up my ass. Because again, I have terrible luck in this game. If anyone's going to have the droll when I'm playing the bonfire, it's going to be against me. So moving on to the spells. I cut the talents down from three to two. I don't feel like talents is going to be like a necessary three, especially because we're not playing desires. Uh, one terraforming because it's good. Uh, one bonds because it's good. I'm also messing around with three Book of Moon, one call by, and three Super Poly. Um, Super Poly just being a fantastic board breaker. Book of Moon being able to flip like Fire King cards face down so that they can't sky burn you is really cute. Um, it's actually been kind of helpful. Obviously, Book of Mooning like the Labyrinth monsters, assuming that they can be targeted. And just booking anything, like even if you go first, it's just another set of interruption along with your hand traps. You know, they try and go for like an Exceed line with like the Exceed armor cards and you just book their stuff. Seems pretty good. Call by, I'm kind of conflicted on. almost just want to play a third Talents because yes, this deck gets hit hard by hand traps, but I'm also like, I feel like I'd rather just see the Talents 
But like if you've got call by and talents, if you go call by and negate the ash or whatever, then the talents is still live. Uh, and then three emblama because it's good. Three stand up because it's good. Three imperm because it's a good hand trap. Uh, one phalanx because people don't read this card and uh, they they play around the fact that they think that they're permanently losing their monster when it's just during the next standby phase. Um, also, apparently, you can banish monsters that you have in your back row with this thing. I did not know that. Uh, even at the regional, when I came into the place, I did not know this. I didn't learn this until after the fact. Um, and then we're playing one Guru, a Mud Dragon for the Super Poly targets, causing Blazar because it's a god card. King Calamity because it's an auto win, unless you're playing against like a back row deck. Uh, Double Legadia, I see so many people play three, and I'm just like, why? You play two, and the trap basically acts as a third. You don't need three, it's fine. <laughs> uh, one Final Sigma because it's an auto win against Flunder. Like, Flunder literally cannot out this. Oh, well, you can use uh, Unexplored Wind or whatever the continuous spell is. No, you cannot. It is ruled that you cannot on the final Sigma because it's considered part of an effect. It is unaffected by card effects. Uh, Crimson Dragon because you need it. I'm messing around with Chaos Angel right now because you got the Buy Steel, so you can do a level 4 and level 6 and make a Chaos Angel and it's hot. Uh, one Baron, same reasoning. Sky Crisis because it's really good. Some people have been saying that going into this new format, Dweller is just like bulk. But if you think about it, Fire Kings has a lot of stuff that activates in the graveyard. And they kind of need the grave. So I've been feeling like Dweller's actually been kind of good. At first, I didn't really want to play Moon Maiden. I'm back to messing around with it. Um, because if you can get this on board, like if you have like Primera or Valor or something, you can go into this. If you have another extender, then you can make a Little Knight and banish a card. So, yeah, we're messing around with Dark, Little Knight, and uh, Moon Maiden. For the side deck, I kind of just threw this together based on another deck profile I saw, if I'm just being honest. Uh, three Nib, two Pankratops, because Pankratops is better than Fenrir. I may even cut the Fenrirs down, just because I'd rather see the Pankratops than the Fenrir. Um, three Fenrir. Three Ghost Bell, uh, one Feather Duster, and then three uh, Cosmic Cyclone. I really don't think you need Lightning Storm. You obviously want to be playing 40, so that's why I'm tempted to cut the Call by the Grave um, just to get it down to 40, or maybe even cut an Emmet 6. Um, I'm sure some people are going to say, you know, Avery, why don't you play uh, the Horus cards? I don't want to be bricking on the Horus cards. I'd rather be having hand traps in my hand or even buy steals. Now, we do get the new um, field spell out of Phantom Nightmare for Horus that its name is considered King Sark while it's on the field. So obviously you can terraforming into that, maybe cut back on like, instead of playing the buy steals and, and as many hand traps, maybe you only play like nine hand traps and then you can play some Horus cards or even cut the super polys and you can do some more like rank eight Xyz shenanigans to insulate yourself from like hand traps and stuff, make a photon lord, whatever the case may be. Um, so there's a lot of different avenues you can go with this deck. However, like I said at the beginning of the video, uh, the biggest issue that Centurion faces, believe it or not, is just itself. You know, when I came in 10th place, I know I keep harping on it, and, like, I'm not trying to showboat, I'm just stating a fact. I did that well because of the fact that people did not know what my deck did. Outside of, like, oh, you're a King Calamity Turbo deck. Yes, but they also didn't know what my cards did. They just assumed that my deck was bad. Like, the majority of the people I played against were like, yeah, sorry, I don't know what your cards do. I wasn't expecting to play against this today. And I proceeded to do well because of it. People had to read Primera at that event. But now, <laughs> and I kid you not, ever since I did that well at that regional, I started a trend, at least in my local area here in Jacksonville, Florida. Like, I think it was like five or six people I saw picking up Centurion cards. <laughs> it was really funny. And like, it was kind of like humble, well, not humbling, but like it, it was honoring to me because I'm like, wow, I started a trend. This is really cool. People were reaching out to me, asking me like if they, if I was going to be selling my Centurion cards, end up selling them later. Um, but at the time I was like, no, 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 like I'm going to hold on to the deck. But the issue is, is that now you don't have the element surprise because now, like ever since I did well with it, it I feel like it kind of started to a lesser degree. It started a trend in the community as a whole. So now people are like, oh, yo, like you can play like 15 hand traps in this deck and like just do well because of it. But now that people know what the deck does, that's inherently an issue for the deck because now people are going to know, okay, if they go for Primera, we just imprimer ash it. It's going to be fine. On top of that, I don't know why people say this, because it's really not a bad deck. People were saying last format, you know, Vanquish Soul's a bad deck. And I'm like, are you outside of your mind? Like, Vanquish Soul has a fantastic Centurion matchup. Anything Rogue has a great uh, Centurion matchup. You know, I didn't play against Rogue at all at that regional. You know, it was all meta all the time. You know, I didn't see Labyrinth. I didn't see any sort of, you know, Floodgate decks. I didn't see a single Runic deck. And Runic... It's not the toughest matchup in the world, but if you don't go first and they start milling you out, you're going to have a really hard time, pimp. 
So that is things that you need to keep in mind when playing this deck. That's why I think that maybe the horse cards are just the way to go with this because you have the just raw physical uh, attack power unga bunga electric boogaloo with the horse monsters making rank 8 exceeds instead of just relying on your hand traps through the sheer fact that people don't know what your deck does and when they're just ending on a little knight you can easily out that because you have enough gas as the centurion player to play through a little knight it's the hand traps that just take a crap on your day so guys let me know what you think about this build down in the comments below how can we make this better i kind of want to play centurion again in this format because Fire Kings, I'm a mid-range player. I don't think I'll be able to learn Fire Kings. I kind of want to play Rescue Ace, but I'm not seeing any good builds out there. And I kind of want to play Labyrinth, but again, I'm not seeing any good builds out there. Like, none of the builds I see on YouTube are playing Transaction Rollback, and if they are, they're OCG builds. So, like, no one's out here putting out good builds. Like, they're all on their Discord channels, like, cooking up some goo, I guess, and they don't want to share. <laughs> so, guys, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video.